Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Eden's Gate Sepulchre Savage. This is the final new Savage difficulty encounter made available by patch 5.05 in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. Strap in friends because this one's a doozy. My name is Ms. Tech and I'll be your raid guide. Similar to normal mode, the platform, divided up into its 16 segments, will play a significant role in how your raid handles incoming mechanics. We begin with Stone Crusher, a tank buster that will slam the active primary target and anyone around them with three hits in a row, dealing high damage and afflicting them with a short physical vulnerability up debuff. Tanks can take each hit solo with an immunity or tank swap between each hit with cooldowns. There are two stone crushers in this first phase, so plan your cooldowns appropriately. Immediately after, Titan will cast Weight of the Land, which will target random sections of the platform for AoE blasts. Players must ensure they are not inside the affected squares. At roughly the same time, each player will be marked with this yellow Pulse of the Land marker. This will soon target them for an AoE attack that affects the entire square segment that player is standing inside of. The attack deals moderate damage and applies a short magic vulnerability up debuff, making it so that the attacks cannot be overlapped. As such, each player needs to stand alone in their very own square segment anytime this attack is going off. The easiest way to do this is to assign a square segment to each player relative to Titan's position, to minimize confusion and avoid overlap. This will take some practice, so keep at it. This is immediately followed by Evil Earth. Similar to normal mode, Evil Earth begins with one source square segment and then explodes any adjacent squares in succession until all of the squares of the platform have been targeted by the attack. On Savage mode, there are two Evil Earth source squares at the same time. Luckily, there are only four possible Evil Earth patterns that technically only require two unique ways of dodging, and players will need to immediately identify which one is happening and adjust appropriately. An easy way to break this down is to look at the initial source square spot Evil Earth can either spawn in a diagonal pattern within the four center squares in either orientation, or it will spawn in the two diagonal corners on the far edges of the platform again in either orientation. The movement required by the raid to dodge each attack changes depending on whether Evil Earth begins in the center or at the edges. Let's take a closer look at how to dodge when it spawns in the center. Do remember that this spawn can be mirrored, but to avoid confusion in this breakdown I'll just show you the one possibility. If it does spawn mirrored, note that the movement is the same, just on the other side of the platform. First, let's look at the pattern of the explosion that happens when Evil Earth starts in the center. As you can see, only two safe spots are formed after the first two rounds of explosions. After the third round of explosions, the center is the only safe section left. With these safe spots in mind, we can easily determine the movement necessary to stay out of each segment explosion. Players will first identify where Evil Earth is starting from and move to the outer corner segment of the diagonal opposite to the spawn. The first Evil Earth explosion will start on those markers. Players will then wait for the second round of explosions that will target every square but the two safe segments. Players will then immediately move into the center to avoid the final round of explosions on the outer edge. Now that we've got that sorted, let's look at the necessary movement if Evil Earth starts in the outer corners. Again, after the initial Evil Earth explosion, the outer corners in which the Evil Earth started will be safe for the next two rounds of explosions. For the final round, the center is the only safe section left. To handle this pattern, players will move and stand diagonally to the initial Evil Earth spawn in the center. Once the first Evil Earth explosion goes off, all players will immediately move into that safe spot created. Here, they will wait for two more rounds of explosions through the center before moving back into the center for safety. Again, the orientation of each Evil Earth spawn is random, but the movement only changes on whether they spawn in the middle or the outer corners. Regardless of the pattern of Evil Earth, as they're dodging explosions, players will all be targeted by these orange Force of the Land markers. With the way the timing works here, Force of the Land will go off immediately after the final Evil Earth explosion. You can think of this attack as the opposite of the yellow Pulse of the Land attacks. Players will need to share this damage by standing on a square segment with at least one other player or they will die. An easy way to handle this is to just have all the players dodge Evil Earth together so that they all end up on the same platform to share Force of the Land. Next up, Titan will cast Voice of the Land, which will deal high raid-wide AoE damage. As you can expect, there is a lot of healing required at this point, so be sure to use shields and raid cooldowns as necessary. This is followed by Geocrush, which will have Titan picking a square across the platform to jump to, knocking back all players a set distance from it. This is an insanely far knockback and players will need to properly position themselves to be knocked into the farthest corner away, or they will need to use their knockback immunities. Once Titan lands, he will turn back towards the platform and begin one of two possible mini phases by changing his form into gauntlets or wheels. As he changes his his form, five players will also be marked for the 
orange stack up markers and three players will be marked for the yellow spread markers. The three yellow markers will always target one tank, one damage dealer, and one healer. Let's take a look at what happens if he changes into his wheels. Similar to normal mode, Titan will destroy anyone directly in front of him and knock back players on his sides. The raid will need to make sure they're on the side of him with two available square sections or they will get knocked off the platform. The yellow and orange markers go off at the same time as Titan drives across the platform and knocks everyone back. To handle this combo, we assign specific squares to each set of players to ensure everyone is pre-positioned in appropriate squares once the knockback happens. All of the orange players will stack on the square adjacent to Titan. The three yellow players will spread to each square next to the incoming Titan drive-by. To minimize confusion, we have any melee players prioritizing the square closer to Titan, while healers move to the furthest square. Ranged and tanks will adjust into the middle third square as necessary. Once Titan drives across the platform, all players will be knocked back in the same orientation as they originally lined up in, and the yellow and orange markers will resolve. Before moving in, players will need to wait for the blue shockwave attack that follows the massive Titan attacks. After the shockwave, Titan will immediately turn around and target the primary tank for fault line, charging back at them for high proximity based damage. To minimize damage, you'll want the tank furthest away from Titan to take this hit, and depending on which tank gets which color marker, a tank swap may be necessary to facilitate this. Once those markers come out, the tank with the orange marker can provoke. After the knockback, the primary tank can then run back in line with Titan and pop a cooldown to take the second dash damage. All other players must ensure they don't move into this line of square segments until the dash completes or they will probably die. Immediately after this dash back to the tank, Titan will cast Magnitude 5.0, which will deal lethal damage to anyone not inside of his hitbox. At the same time, all players will again be targeted by another round of yellow Pulse of the Land markers. To handle this combo, once Titan dashes back to the tank, all players can run into his hitbox. Once the donut attack goes off, players must quickly move into their assigned squares to avoid overlap. Again, we use our assigned relative positions to Titan to avoid confusion. Once these yellow markers go off, Titan will return to his regular form and this mini phase is complete. Before we go on, let's take a look at what happens if he reforms into gauntlets instead for the mini phase. Again, five players will be targeted with the orange force of the land markers, and one tank, one damage dealer, and one healer will be marked with yellow. This massive landslide attack will destroy anyone not directly in front of him, and players will need to line up in the four squares in front to avoid death. Again, the timing of the yellow and the orange marker explosions forces players into very specific squares. The group of orange markers will stand in the same square Titan is on. The first square directly in front of him will be occupied by melee, with the healers in the fourth square, furthest from Titan. The tanks or the ranged will again be in the third square as necessary. As soon as the massive landslide attack goes off on either side, all players will need to immediately move out of that line they were standing in to avoid the secondary blue shockwave attack. Next, he will cast another voice of the land, and healers need to be ready with their shields and heals. This is followed by landslide, a massive cross-shaped attack in a pattern signified by the direction that Titan faces before he jumps away. To easily determine where the safe spots for landslide are, the tanks should reposition Titan directly in the center of the room. Two possible safe spots will form based on where he looks and he eventually lands, and all players must move into them as quickly as possible. As soon as the attack goes off, each player will need to move out of the safe spots to avoid the next blue shockwave attacks that will hit those same areas. At the same time, bomb boulders will drop around the platform in a plus and X configuration in a random order. On top of all of that, Titan will turn back around and cast either left or rightward landslide, which will target one half of the platform. Players will first need to dodge the initial left or right landslide, and then immediately move into that same area to avoid the next blue shockwave attack on the other side. During this time, the bomb boulders will begin to light up in the same sequence that they drop down in, and players will need to move into the safe boulders first, wait for the first round of explosions before moving into the next safe zone to avoid the second bomb boulder explosions. At this point, Titan will return to his normal form and this mini phase ends. Going back to that first initial Geo Crush, the order that these mini phases happen in is random, so you can either get gauntlets or wheels first, followed by the resulting mechanics. Once that first mini phase is over, Titan will then cast Crumbling Down. This will target one damage dealer and one healer or tank with these orange markers. These players will soon drop a proximity based damage marker on the ground underneath them. Eventually, a massive boulder will drop down in this area. To control where these fall, in our group we have the Mark Damage Dealer aim to drop theirs on the A-Way marker in the northwest corner, while the Mark Tanker Healer drops theirs at the B. The entire raid will then move away from these areas to minimize damage. Two more players will be marked and will need to drop their boulders in the same manner towards the south. Once the two north boulders
boulders drop down, the raid will need to move back away from the south again to minimize more damage. These massive boulders will crumble if dropped too close to Titan, and this movement and configuration of drop boulders will allow for one boulder to remain standing, which the raid will use to hide behind to avoid the incoming seismic wave attack. While all of this is happening, Titan is also bringing down three rows of small bomb boulders in a sequence that will explode in the same sequence they drop down on. As the group moves behind the massive boulder to avoid seismic wave, they'll need to keep an eye on the smaller boulders and how they'll explode. Immediately after seismic wave goes off, the group will need to be ready to dodge into the safe zone created by the first line of exploding bomb boulders in the center of the room. This all happens very quickly, so stay on your toes. This is followed by another Voice of the Land AoE blast to heal through. Up next, the second Stone Crusher. Be sure to immunity through it or tank swap as necessary. At this point, Titan will cast Geo Crush again, jumping across the platform to a random square. Once he lands, he'll reform into whatever form he didn't do the first time, and that mini phase of mechanics will begin. Once that mini phase ends, Titan will become untargetable and the next phase will begin. In this phase, Titan Maximum appears on the north side of the platform. He cannot be moved, but his hitbox is large enough to be hit from any of the four quadrants of the platform. Since the enraged timer can be quite spicy, players will need to keep up time on the boss as much as possible, regardless of what part of the platform each incoming mechanic will send them to. This phase begins with an Earthen Fury cast. This deals very high raid-wide damage. Be ready with those shields, heals, and raid cooldowns. Next up, Titan will cast Earthen Fists, powering up his fists twice. This power-up can happen on one side and then the other, or twice on the same side. You'll need to keep a close eye on his actual fists to see what side lights up and in what order, and then move into the opposite sides of the attacks to avoid them. Naturally, random square segments will be covered by Weight of the Land AoEs at this time, so as you dodge to each safe side, make sure you're not inside an AoE. Immediately after, Titan will begin to cast Dual Earthen Fists. This will cause a large blue circle to spawn directly in front of him that will eventually knock back all players a set distance from it. At the same time, a non-tank player will be marked by this blue Weight of the World marker. When Weight of the World triggers, anyone in the same square and any adjacent square to that attack will be hit for damage and a magic vulnerability up debuff. To minimize the impact this has on the actual platform, the player with the blue marker can run all the way to the far south corner so that their Weight of the World footprint only affects the four squares of that particular quadrant. To handle all of this while the knockback is happening, I would highly, highly recommend saving your knockback immunity during the second Geo Crush in the first phase to have it available for this. This allows for minimal movement and gives tanks the opportunity to pre-position for the incoming slashing tank buster AoEs. The blue weight of the world player is the only player that will have to move during this time as they move into the far corner to minimize the size of their explosion. After the knockback, both tanks are targeted by Earthen Anguish, a massive circle AoE tank buster. The tanks need to make sure they're far enough away from each other and the group to avoid overlap. Immediately after, a tank will be marked for Megalith with this stack up marker. This damage is significant and must be shared by both tanks with cooldowns. The damage can only be split between two people, so make sure only the tanks are stacking for this attack. Up next is Tectonic Uplift, which will cause two diagonal quadrants of the platform to be raised up. It's possible to jump from a raised platform to one below, but movement between the quadrants is otherwise impossible. As the platforms are being marked for tectonic uplift. One tank or healer and one damage dealer are marked with blue weight of the world markers. These players will need to take their markers to the far corners of the lower quadrants to minimize their explosion impact. The rest of the group will split into two, with the damage dealers moving onto the north race platform while the other tanks and healers move onto the south race platform. As soon as the weight of the world markers go off on the lower quadrants, weight of the land AoEs will appear in random pattern. While the exact location of each weight of the land AoEs is random, one of the lower quadrants will always have three safe segments, while the other only has two safe segments. Immediately after, the players on the race platforms will each be marked with a blue, a yellow, and an orange marker. The blue markers will stay on top of the raised platforms, moving to the far corners to take the hit and minimize their explosions. Players with yellow markers will need to move into the specific lower quadrant that has three available safe segments and stand on their own segment to avoid overlapping the yellow explosions. In this specific quadrant, Quadrant, you have one segment targeted by Weight of the Land, one segment for the original blue marker player, and two segments for the incoming yellow marker players. The players with the orange markers will meet on the specific lower quadrant that only has two available safe segments. They'll both stand in one segment to share the damage of the orange marker. This specific lower quadrant has two Weight of the Land segments, one segment for the original blue marker player, and one segment for the two orange markers to share. All of these attacks go off at the same time.
time, and players must be in each of their assigned spots to avoid death. At this point, all players can move into the middle to continue their attack on Titan. Earthen Fury is cast here, and healers need to be ready with their shields, heals, and raid cooldowns. Once Earthen Fury goes off, the platform will be returned to normal. Next up, Rock Throw will target the two healers for jails. These healers will need to move pretty far away from each other, otherwise the jails will be impossible to kill, Titan will get buffed, and you will die. While the healers are getting ready to be jailed, Titan will cast Plate Fracture, which will target one of the four quadrants for destruction. All players can look at this windup attack to see which side of the platform he is targeting first, and then move into the opposite side. The healers can move north and south here, and then adjust to the left or right as necessary to drop their jails in an area that isn't about to get immediately destroyed. At this point, the healer jails will fully form, and the first Plate Fracture will occur on either the north or south quadrant on the telegraph side. If he targets the north quadrant first, the next Plate Fracture will also target the remaining north quadrant. If he targets the south quadrant first, the next Fracture will for sure target the other south quadrant. As such, the raid will need to break out the healer jail on the breaking side first, before breaking out the other healer. After the second Plate Fracture occurs, Titan will wind up again and destroy a third platform. The raid can quickly look at his windup animation again and move to the opposite quadrant to avoid death. All of this is followed by another Earthen Fury cast. Mitigate and heal through this damage as necessary. The platform will then again be reformed. Next, Titan will cast Tumult and slam the platform five times for raid-wide damage. Heal through this as necessary. This is followed by another dual Earthen Fists, which is handled in the exact same manner. Use knockback immunities, bring the blue marker to a far corner, and have the tanks spread and pop cooldowns for the tank busters. Immediately after, the boss will cast another Earthen Fist, powering up his fist twice, and a single evil Earth marker will appear on the platform. This combo has a bit of randomness to it based on which fists are powered up and where the evil Earth actually starts from, so be sure to move to the opposite fist side and then dodge into the evil Earth AoEs as they grow while avoiding the second fist attack. This movement may seem hectic, but with practice will come quite easily. This leads us into a second and final tectonic uplift mini phase. This time, four players will be immediately marked by orange markers. We have these players all move into the south rising quadrant, stacking together in one square segment, while unaffected players move into the north rising quadrant. As soon as the platforms raise up, the two healers will be targeted for jails again. They'll run into the corner of their assigned segment to drop their jail. All other players will have their own relative segment assignments as well, with melee and tank players getting priority of the segments closer to Titan. Once these healer jails drop, each player on each platform will break them out, ensuring they stick to their assigned segments. While this is happening, everyone will be targeted for yellow spread markers, including the healers inside the actual jails. But since we're all in our assigned segments already, there isn't really much to adjust. Next, two more blue markers will appear, and we have these players move laterally to the far corners of the lower platforms to drop off their explosions. At the same time, Way to the Land AoEs begin to target segments on the lower platforms. This time, one of the lower quadrants will have two open safe spots, while the other one only has one. Immediately after, two more blue markers go out, and those players will stay on their raised platforms and move to the far corners to minimize their explosions. The remaining four damage dealers will be marked by orange, and they'll need to move into the lower quadrant that has the two available safe spots. They'll stand together in the one segment to share the damage. Once all of these explosions occur, players can move back into the center to mitigate and heal through the next Earthen Fury. Another five tumults will cast here, so be sure to keep those heals and shields up. Next, another plate fracture combo will begin. Identify which side he is destroying first, and then move into the opposite side to avoid death. Tanks will then need to share another megalith stack up with cooldowns. Make sure the rest of the group stays well enough away from them. After the tank buster, the boss will continue plate fracture. Check his windup animation to see what side he's destroying next. He will always destroy the platform adjacent to the first one, so make sure you move out of the way appropriately. This leaves us two quadrants to handle the next combo of markers. At the same time, one player will be marked by blue, three players will be marked for yellow, and everyone else will have orange. The exact positions for everyone can be changed based on which orientation of the quadrants you're left with, but the basic idea remains the same. The blue marker is always taken to the far corner so that the explosion only affects the single quadrant. This allows everyone else, the four segments of the other quadrant, to handle yellow and orange. Orange will all stack together in one segment, while the three yellow players fan out in the segments around them. These attacks all go off at the same time, so make sure you're in the appropriate segment or you will die. Titan will then cast Earth and Fury and the platform will return to normal. Make Make sure you mitigate and heal as necessary. At this point, Titan will cast Orogenesis and spit out Baby Titan back onto the platform.
platform. This marks the beginning of the final phase. Titan Maximum will no longer be targetable, but he'll still be throwing out tons of mechanics. Once OG Titan can be targeted, he'll cast yet another Earthen Fury. In this phase, Earthen Fury will also apply a pretty spicy dot that lasts for 12 seconds. This is immediately followed by a set pattern of Weight of the Land A respawns around the platform. These weights will begin to explode in a clockwise manner on both the outer edge and the inside four segments for a total of five explosions. While these weights are moving in their clockwise rotation, the tanks and healers will be targeted by orange markers, and the damage dealers will each have a yellow marker. The goal here is to satisfy the requirements of each marker while also dodging the weight of the lands as they rotate around the platform. This can be handled in a number of ways, but I'll focus on how our groups do it. As soon as the weights spawn, we have our two ranged players move to the outer segments. They'll follow behind their weights as they move around the outer edges, making sure to stay in their own segments alone the entire time. In the center, the tanks and healers group up in the segment diagonal to the initial spawn point. After the second weight explosion, the group will move into the segment to their right and sit there for the rest of the combo. The two damage dealers in the center follow a similar movement pattern opposite to the stacked group, moving into the safe zones as the explosions move around them. We prefer this method as it minimizes the total amount of movement necessary, but you can certainly employ a strategy that forces players to adjust with each explosion if that's easier for everyone to process. Up next, another dual earthen fists. Players will need to use their knockback immunities here or position to avoid getting knocked off the platform. The player with blue will move to the far corner to drop their explosion while the tanks spread from each other and take their tank busters with cooldowns. Another voice of the land to heal through, followed by another five tumults and one more voice of the land. All of this damage is topped off by yet another earthen fury. As you can imagine, this calls for a ton of healing and raid cooldowns, so healers beware. Immediately after, another round of rotating weight of the lands will appear. This time, all of the damage dealers will be targeted for the orange stack markers, while the tanks and healers have to deal with the yellow spread markers. This combo is handled in the exact same manner as before, with the rolls switching their positions, moving around the weights to satisfy the stack and spread requirements for each marker color. Once this combo ends, Titan Maximum will cast Earth and Fist and power up his fists twice. Players will again need to move to the opposite sides of the platforms from his glowing fists. This is immediately followed by another Stone Crusher, immunity through it or tank swap with cooldowns. Tanks will then need to stack for the next Megalith cast to share the damage. One more Earth and Fury, and one last combo of rotating weight of the lands and markers will happen. This is the same combo as the first one, with the tanks and healers marked for the orange stack and the damage dealers marked with yellow spread. Use the same movement to dodge each weight and satisfy the stack and spread requirements of each marker. After the last weight of the land explosion, Titan Maximum will again power up his fists. Move to the opposite sides of the glowing fists as necessary. Next, another voice of the land cast. Five tumults, a second voice of the land, another five tumults, and one final voice of the land before Titan casts his final Earthen Fury Hard and Rage. You'll need to destroy him before this cast goes off, or you will die. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll see you again in 5.1. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.